Good morning. I welcome you all on this beautiful spring day. Today is the first day of spring, and we are here to celebrate together. You may have noticed the two tables in the narthex as you are entering the church. One table is, has um, samples and the availability for you to sign up and register. If you would like to purchase an Easter gram, we have both for children and adults, and there are samples of both of those little Easter grams available for you to sign up. This is a fundraiser from the Stewardship Committee for our Faith Revenue Fund for 2022. The next table that you will encounter is for our Easter um, flowers. This year, um, it will be a mixture of flowers. Uh, we have not been assured that it will all be lilies, but they will be beautiful tulips and lilies, and who knows what other wonderful flowers might be available. Um, those, again, will be $10, and we will use those to decorate the front of our sanctuary for the Easter holiday. Also on Saturday, April 2nd, we will have our spring cleanup, and that will take place from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. with lunch provided. Um, so if you'd like to rake or prune, if you're into cleaning and bagging those leaves that fell off after our fall cleanup, please join us for the fun on April 2nd. I believe that's it for our announcements this morning. Please take a few moments to greet one another. join in the call to worship. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, come to the wells. Our souls thirst for you, O God. We lift up our hands and call on your name. Come, be filled with that which sustains you. Our souls are satisfied in you, O God. In the shadow of your wings we sing with joy.
please join in the prayer of invocation. Author of abundance, God of change, we come into this hour with holy expectations. As we travel on our journey of transformation this Lenten season, we know that you are with us. You walk beside us. Your presence surrounds us. Help us to bear fruit as we walk this road. Remind us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that your rod and your staff comfort us, that you have prepared a feast for us when all can come and eat. Keep us forever in the path as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. The Gospel today is from Luke chapter 13. There were some present at that very time who told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered thus? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And Jesus told this parable. A man who had a fig tree planted in a vineyard came seeking fruit on it, and finding none, said to the vine dresser, These three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And the vine dresser answered, Let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it and put on some manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of God. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, choir. That was that was lovely. You may have noticed by looking at local news that our infection rate within Washoe County continues to decrease. God willing, and if we unite together in continued prayer, that this pandemic will see its end. Um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will meet the CDC guidelines and maintain an infection rate of 5% or less for two to three weeks. Our hope and our prayer is that we will be maskless and plexiglassless for, for Easter Sunday. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this morning. Amen. I listen to various podcasts. A particularly interesting one was called The Confession Line. Now, it was based on the true story of a man who set up a phone confession line where people could call in anonymously and without judgment, leave their confession on an answering machine. Now, these sins range from stealing pencils from the workplace to adultery and murder. It was intriguing to hear the transformation of the host of this line throughout the podcast. What started out for him as a social experiment eventually took over his life until his death, affecting his marriage and his mental and physical and emotional health. Now, I believe that part of the angst that this man experienced was because there was no judgment or repentance in the confessions. It was easy to confess, but hard to repent and repair what damage had been done. But then again, if repentance was meant to be easy, there'd be an app for that. To repent is to literally turn toward something else. We are offered the freedom that we most desire to leave the bad junk behind and live now. To repent is to encounter, encounter life, the divine, all that is sacred and our purpose in a new way, a truer way. It's being jolted into discovering a different reality. It's not about trying to satisfy an impossibly demanding deity. It's about trying to discover peace and joy when those things are proving hard to find. The parable of the unfruitful fig tree is a story about the pressing need for repentance, about reworking our thoughts to see a new reality. The parable might strike us as harsh at first blush. We like Jesus or words purported to him in meek and mild doses. But this parable has images of judgment, a frustrated vineyard owner, a speechless tree down to its last chance, and a promise that the clock is running out. 
No matter that the tree has been granted a reprieve and has an advocate in the gardener who's willing to provide support for a year, the parable assumes that the choices that we make can and do and will make a difference. I don't think the writer of Luke is issuing threats so that we'll jump on to the do good treadmill. Relax. <laughs> Nor is he chiding the folks that are spending Sunday mornings at the casinos or on the soccer field. Luke doesn't generally devote much effort in the Gospels to criticizing or condemning individuals, except for villains like Herod Antipas from last week and Pilate this week. They and other rulers need to be named, not only for their appetite for violence, but because the evil fruit that they produce as leaders poisons the countless lives of others. And to appreciate the urgency of this parable, imagine fruit bearing less as manifesting personal virtue and more as providing sustenance and vitality to others. That's the purpose of planting a fig tree in the first place, feeding ourselves and others. Imagine, imagine when religion stops bearing fruit. Imagine a faith tradition that cannot or will not do anything to contribute mercy and beauty to the world. Imagine a congregation so out of touch with the needs and shifting demographics of its community that its worship functions as an isolationist cultural self-adoration. Imagine ecclesial hierarchs who endorse a despot's unprovoked war. Imagine church leaders who refuse to take serious action to remedy entrenched misogyny and homophobia in their organizational structures. Imagine churches that stay silent when school boards censure books and politicians pass laws that endanger the lives and well-being of trans youth. Imagine a theological system that exists mostly to preserve itself and the privilege of its members just sucking nutrients from the soil without doing anything to curb people's hungers. Those are all good examples of unfruitful fig trees. Now count me among those eager to see a supreme being cut all those things down so that something else can grow in their place. I'd even help sharpen the ax. But the reality is that we are the purveyors of blessings and curses in this life. And we can choose to be fruitful in love, and support of others, just as we can choose to be stagnant and unproductive. The parable's crisis, a fig tree on a prolonged fruitless streak, is indicative of divine priorities. This is not a passage about people needing to prove themselves worthy of divine favor. It's not a depiction of a trigger-happy or an unsparing God. It's about the realism that when things ache, whether people or groups or systems that are supposed to be providing fruit and healing fail to do so, it is sinful and repentance is needed. This passage speaks about judgment so it can, like many biblical passages about judgment, also speak about life. Spring 
is coming into view. This year is already well underway. What does procreative life look like in the place that we've been planted? What does it mean for people to flourish and to promote the flourishing of others? What vision of life resides at the heart of our traditions, at the heart of our hope for this church and the world? And what traditions need to be pruned because they are no longer life-giving or producing fruit? That is what repentance is all about being jolted into discovering a different reality, a reality that is life-giving for ourselves and for others. Amen. As we gather before God in prayer, there are those from this gathering that I wish to lift up for prayers. And so I lift up Beverly Kirkpatrick, who is having health issues. Let us surround her with thoughts of care and support. I also lift up the family of Jim North, who passed away. Let us surround his wife, Kathy, and their son, as well as Marty Tracy and Bob Broyley, his brother-in-law, in our prayers of comfort and peace. Let's continue to hold Doug Whistler in our prayers as he grieves the loss of his mother, Evelyn. A reminder that Evelyn's service will be held next Sunday following worship. Let us also pray for all of those who are suffering in Ukraine, those who have lost loved ones, who have been forced to flee their homes, their country, their livelihood. Let us surround that country with our prayers. Let us also pray for Russia, for those in Russia who are not aware of what is going on in a country next to them, and for those in Russia who believe that might makes right, let us pray. Great love. We always want to know why bad things happen, particularly when bad things happen to good people. Today, we are reminded that it is not that you choose between who is right and who is wrong, who is good or who is bad. You hold up the reality that all of us, 
all of us need to repent and turn back towards you for whatever reason we are being held back from your love and from the ability to choose to love others, those in our family, those in our workplaces, those in our community, country, and the world. Open our eyes, O oh gracious one, so that we may see that we all are in need of confession and repentance when it comes to how we treat one another, how we respond to you and your love, and how we treat this beautiful world that you have given to us. Today, oh God, we lift up those who are in need of your healing presence. And so we lift up Beverly Kirkpatrick and Beverly Howard, who are in need of your healing strength. And we lift up those who are grieving. And so we lift up Evelyn's and Jim's families and ask that you surround them as well with peace and comfort during this time of grief. Great love, hear us now as we raise to you our private joys and concerns, those things that weigh heavily on our hearts. Hear us now as we lift them to you in silence. We lift our prayers to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. as a sign of our turning back toward that which is God and also that which is best in ourselves. Let us present our gifts to God.
please join in the prayer of dedication. For the wondrous ways this offering will bless this community, we dedicate these gifts. For all the ways it'll help us nurture caring relationships with our neighbors, we dedicate these gifts. Let this offering and the works of our hands and feet be good fruit in the world. Amen. Now may the love of God, the peace of the Christ, and the community and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Children of God, let's